Good afternoon, everyone. It's Michael. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to complete our uh, NCY oil cooler setup. And what's going on is like, I didn't really like the, the way it crosses over. So what I'm going to do is probably rearrange it. I think these are bi-directional anyway. So what we're probably going to do is put the out facing our right hand side and our input going into the radiator on our left hand side. So out going from the radiator will be coming out from our right hand side now and input uh, coming into the radiator will be on our left hand side so you can we can swamp this so the canister can actually flow exactly like this and I guess we can just say outward be facing out toward the end so out from the canister into the radiator will be on the right hand side instead of having crisscross and twist right there you can see here so we'll have to break that tie strap it's gonna be really messy I'm gonna try doing my best I'm gonna loosen this and see if I can just swamp the hose I'm gonna have to like sort of tug on the hose and hopefully they come off pretty easy I doubt it so we'll try to do that way. If not, then we'll have to unscrew it. It's going to create a little bit more of a detour, but that's great. We'll get that resolved. Another thing I want to share with you, I was going to actually show you, um, the NCY is already put on there and everything. Just make sure you save a little bit like a centimeter there. I know my previous recording, I went kind of a little backwards on you. Uh, they're kind of, kind of cut in slices there because the battery runs out. I tried to glue it together. I didn't realize it was not in order. But you pretty much get the idea of, you know, pretty much put the cap back on. And what I did is I even took the vacuum and sucked after the cap has already been screwed in the bonjo bolt, I took the um, the vacuum and kind of sucked it out some more. I did the same thing with here. Uh, be careful, don't want to put your vacuum to suck all your uh, brake uh, bleeder out. You want to put the, at least the rubber and then you want to put the plastic cap because the plastic cap has that little small hole again that where it can, it can still you know, almost suck everything out of your brake bleeder. So you make sure you want to put the rubber one. The rubber one doesn't have any hole in there. So that way you can get all the moisture. That'd be my trick to you is to take out the aluminum cap have the rubber and then the plastic cap over, make it sure it's sealed, and then go ahead and get the vacuum and just suck everything out. Especially, you know, your brake fluid gets dripped and it gets into those Allen bolt slots or your screw bolt slots. So there you go, this looks nice now. The brakes are tight and they're both properly bleed. You can see it doesn't push all the way. That means the caliper and things are working great. They are in sync and in contact now. So you can see here if I can get resolution here. And can't see it too well, but it's right there. Let's see if I can raise it up a little bit. Yeah, so if I squeeze the front brake, this is what we're looking at here. See that? It puts a lot of tension on the assembly here. And then the same thing with the rear. If I reach over, again, the best way to do it is just to be on the same side as your rear brake caliper and just tilt your handlebar in more like this. And then you can reach for it because it's within length now. And that way you have. You know, with, with even just, you know, you don't have to have extreme long arms, but it's nice to have it, but you don't, you can still make it work from this side all the way here. You can see the length is not that far apart where you can reach over, grab the brake lever and open your brake bleeder bolt and do your thing. So you can see this one here, it's a really nice firm squeeze. That's what you're looking for. This one's actually a little even more firmer, kind of like it. But just hoping that the JB weld that we did doesn't leak. If it would leak, it would show a sign. We can feel some brake fluid substance here. And so far, I'm not feeling it. And then we can also open the brake cap and inspect to see if it actually flood out or anything like that. Another thing we're gonna do is once we get this situated, when we roll out, park it overnight, where we're gonna be, I'm gonna put, and put some tie straps and have it tied in like this, both of them. The reason why is you wanna squeeze every bit of air pressure uh, pretty much 24 hours. It eventually will get all out there. If you do have this set to a certain level, I recommend going all the way. I guess this five is the highest. You can go on these things, because I believe one makes it even more, more closer to you. So I think six, actually. Didn't realize it had that many. Okay, so six. This one you can see here, it says the same thing, all the way to six. So it looks fabulous with the NCY uh, brake bleeder uh, master cylinder cap there. So I'm very happy, the ram mount and everything. So I'm just want to make sure it's perfect. I might even need to cut some slack on the hose too. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the extension we need to get this guy unscrewed. Uh, he took what, a seven millimeter that we, we notified before. So let me go ahead and look for that seven millimeter socket here. Give it one second here. There it is. Things are falling in the cracks. Yeah, I'm eventually gonna sort out all the basic tools from my Allen ones here and take out the only Allen ones that we're gonna work on for this scooter. So we'll get a little bit more faster 
you know, instead of having to sort out, there's so many tools to get which one one. But most of the majority of these tools I do use, um, but some of them I don't, so I definitely need to move them around. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, first of all, we're gonna see if we can do it this way and drag and pull. If I can swap it out easily without having to change so much, see how beautiful they are. Made in the USA. And see why oil cooler set up here. I see a lot of people actually install them. Uh, I'm not sure if like the two holes here that they normally would have here, what they do is they take them, these two right here, right here, these two. What they do is I've seen some of them take them and um, you know, they find where wherever the two mounts and holes are. If you have like an open CVT cover, which we're gonna install uh, an ankle biter. So that will probably work, but they put them right here. This is where they would mount it at, right here in this little slot area. And for me, I think it's great and all, but you still have blown engine heat coming forward backwards, right? So engine rises to the, heat rises to the top and turn backward. But they also got a little fin, a fan here that cools the radiator, which makes a little bit more sense too. So it's kind of nice if you can actually mount it right here. I mean, it's not that big right there. You can see how square it is. If you were to take it and mount it right here, wouldn't be too bad. And the thing with also is, uh, since my scooter has two shocks, I don't have to worry too much on, um, you know, having the force. Because a lot of people, when they get usually an open CBT cover, it, it's get a little bit more fragile because this is the thing that's only holding it with one shock right here. So what it does, it kind of cracks sometimes. So people usually need a case brace if they have only a one shock setup. I have a balance of two shocks, so it kind of helps offset it. But I'll show you anyway, if you need to install a case brace, we'll probably do that as well. Um, case brace just put a little bit more support. It brings it all the way to the other bolt over there. So it kind of uses this whole piggyback right here and it covers the whole brace. However, the ankle binder that we have, uh, the ultimate ankle binder, it's gonna come with the back case brace as well. So it's gonna be mounted here, plated on here as well, solid. And then it's gonna actually be able to put the front as well on here. So it's gonna be pretty phenomenal. So we're gonna see that in play. We'll see how that works. Um, in the meantime, let's go and get that swamped out and look forward to putting our fan shroud and everything else back on. So it's getting pretty exciting now. I mean, the project's coming nicely. Also, we're gonna get some um, super glue soon because these things are fragile. You know, they look like this is hanging on that little leftover uh, plastic right there. Hopefully some Gorilla super glue will help that. If not, then we'll have to figure out another alternative. Then we gotta make sure we gotta put this in, custom align it, cause again, it won't go in without us lifting this whole frame first. So we'll have to do that. Take out the seat. See, there we go, it won't even, it won't, this is all the way impact as possible and it won't go in without us needing to pretty much, you can see here, it's not gonna go in. I can try putting the thread. Oh, actually, wow. Whoa, this actually went in. Uh, a little surprise, I guess maybe cold air or something shrinks things, huh? Look at that, look at that. This thing actually wor worked already. I didn't have to, I'm not sure why I did different to be honest with you. Maybe the shocks pushed it down. Maybe, if this is the case, then I could probably just twist it right now. Save me a, a little bit. We'll still have to take it off and everything because we have to install it um, the other way as well. But let me, Oh, it went in there for a split second. What do you think, huh? Let me let me tighten this back. This is like really. Let me see if I even get one of these on there for right now. It helps support this whole frame here when we put our, uh, you know, 11 pound Gibby here. It might be even 20 pounds. I realize some of the stock ones are already 11 pounds. So let me see if I can do this with one hand. This should thread in there easily. You don't want to cross thread it. Everything I'm always afraid of cross threading. Uh, come on. I gotta feel the groove. Okay, I'm not feeling the groove, so let me go ahead and try to set this down here and actually maybe get this guy on here now, right now. Because I actually want to see how it would actually stabilize itself. So, let me do that. Yeah, I don't have to clamp no more. So bear with me here. It's gonna be a little bit tilted awkwardly. Okay, give me one second here. There we go. All right, I always prefer not to use gloves, to be honest with you, unless really need it for chemical. That way I can feel my threads and stuff like that. All right, see there? Okay, so, I'll be damned. It feels like it can go in, but I just need to be able to spin it freely. 
hopefully we're not having another challenge here. Let me back up. I need to, I need to have this align and have it spin, you know? I know this is the bolt for it though, because it came with it. See now it's like, it feels like it's cross-threading. It's not, it's not like perfect. So it's gonna be another challenge here. I need to, need to get it in and It's amazing how we even got it to this point and still won't even drive in. It looks perfectly in, but it's not going in. So let me keep trying here. You guys can see this here. So I'm trying to get this, this guy in here. There we go, see? So this is what it's supposed to drive in by now. There. Oh, see, it's not spinning. I want to make sure this doesn't. Yeah, this looks like it's almost getting eaten up a little bit. So I got to be really careful. Let me try to see if I can put this in here on this side first and then come for the very top one. So bear with me here. You guys going to see this guy. Here I thought it was gonna be a lot more tighter, but this is actually supposed to go in. Nothing else should be restricting it really. So I'm gonna start from this bottom in here and then we're gonna put it toward the oh, okay. Okay, see it goes in. So there's no problem here. The thread's not that bad at all. But we'll do the opposite now, going this way. And then we're gonna give it a good tight. the resolution back here all right so you can see here it's driving in so that's fine and look at this one right here see now this barely gives you just enough here to protrude it in now it's gonna be tight so I have to see there you go it's just all oh, this is just uh anti seize the little silver stuff they're not they're not powder coat with silver it's actually just a solid piece of aluminum but i need to back it up and make it go in here all the way or somewhat without eating it itself god i realize it's gonna be harder just to once you get this part freely you still have to worry about each thread angle either i need to back it up or what oh boy Okay, so let's do this again. This seems like it's in, so I guess I drive it this way. When I drive it, I want to be careful not moving it. Okay, let's do this again. We'll drive it. 